Released in 1978, The Big Sleep is a classic film that seamlessly blends mystery, drama, and a touch of humor. Directed by Michael Winner, the movie boasts a stellar cast delivering performances that keep viewers hooked from start to finish. As you dive into this cinematic gem, you'll encounter a myriad of characters, each playing a unique role in the unfolding narrative. Who stands out the most to you? Who's your favorite amidst this eclectic mix? But that's not all. Brace yourself for a roller coaster of emotions as it unfolds its funny, shocking, and even sad moments. The plot, based on Raymond Chandler's novel, weaves a tale that's both engaging and unpredictable. Now, as you reminisce about The Big Sleep, do you have a cherished memory associated with this timeless classic? Perhaps a moment that left a lasting impression on you? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We would love to hear about your personal experiences with this cinematic gem. So, grab your popcorn, settle in, and enjoy the ride. There's more to discover, and we can't wait to hear what resonated with you the most. The Big Sleep has surprises in store, and we're eager to know which parts captivated you. Stay tuned for more updates and trivia about this movie that continues to captivate audiences with its timeless appeal. In the 1978 adaptation of The Big Sleep, certain deviations from the source material may leave viewers less than satisfied. Starring Robert Mitchum as the iconic detective Philip Marlowe, the film takes a departure both in its chronological setting and geographical location. Placing Marlowe in London instead of the familiar Los Angeles landscape may be disorienting for those accustomed to the original noir ambience. Mitchum, a seasoned actor, appears somewhat miscast as the aged Marlowe, a departure from the character's weariness more expected in a relatively younger protagonist. The storyline, shifted forward by four decades, dilutes the impact of certain plot elements, diminishing the gravity of the scandal central to Chandler's novel. Criticisms extend to the performances, with particular focus on Candy Clark's portrayal, which some find ham-fisted. Richard Boone's contribution, with a seemingly lackluster presence, adds to the overall sense of detachment from the characters. Sarah Miles, memorable for her distinctive hairstyle, fails to leave a lasting impression, while the film's sterile scenery and questionable costume choices for Marlowe further detract from its credibility. The film's attempt to transplant the noir atmosphere to the English countryside is met with skepticism challenging the genre's conventions. Additionally, the inclusion of modern elements, such as Marlowe donning expensive attire and a Rolex watch, raises eyebrows and disrupts the expected integrity of the character. Ultimately, for those seeking a faithful and atmospheric adaptation of Chandler's work, this version of The Big Sleep may fall short of expectations. The film's deviations in setting, character portrayal, and overall execution may leave viewers questioning the decision to reimagine such a classic story in this manner. Robert Mitchum underwent plastic surgery shortly after filming a notable aspect that surfaced in the aftermath of The Big Sleep's production. In contrast to his earlier portrayal in Farewell, My Lovely, where critics paid minimal attention to his age, the release of this film prompted widespread commentary on Mitchum's perceived aging. Many critics contended that he appeared too old and out of shape for the role of Marlowe. It's noteworthy that Robert Mitchum holds the unique distinction of being the sole actor to embody Raymond Chandler's private I Philip Marlowe on cinema screens twice. This film marks his second portrayal of the iconic character, adding a distinctive chapter to his acting career. In conclusion, Robert Mitchum's decision to undergo plastic surgery post-production, coupled with the contrasting critiques on his age, adds intriguing layers to the cinematic narrative of The Big Sleep, making it a distinctive chapter in the actor's career. This film stands as a testament to Mitchum's exclusive portrayal of Chandler's Marlowe, showcasing his enduring presence in the cinematic world. Part of the 1970s film noir and hard-boiled detective revival, this production, among others like Gumshoe, Chinatown, and The Black Bird, contributed to a surge of Chandler adaptations. Five films, including this one, emerged during this period. During the final shootout, Michael Winner revealed that Robert Mitchum and Richard Boone were notably intoxicated. Winner humorously suggested renaming it Gunfight at Alcoholics Anonymous. Richard Boone's second-to-last film, It Followed Wood Winter Kills and preceded The Bushido Blade, his final work, shot in 1978. A gritty addition to the era's detective films, The Big Sleep's behind-the-scenes anecdotes add a unique layer to its legacy in the genre. Robert Mitchum, Sarah Miles, and John Mills, known for their roles in Ryan's Daughter, 
converged in the 1978 adaptation of The Big Sleep. Mitchum's off-screen encounters were as dramatic as the on-screen mysteries. Stalked by two women during production, their clash in his apartment for his attention mirrored the intrigue of the film's plot. James Stewart, grappling with hearing and potential memory issues, faced challenges delivering lines promptly. His aged appearance startled some cast members. Mitchum dryly noted the picture was all about corpses, but Jimmy looked deader than any of them. Ironically, Stewart outlived Mitchum by a day, almost two decades later. Amidst these behind-the-scenes episodes, The Big Sleep unfolded as a gritty addition to the 70s detective film wave. A piece in the Chandler adaptation surge, it stands as a testament to the era's noir revival. The film's legacy gains a unique layer, intertwining the actor's real-life encounters with the enigmatic storyline. Robert Mitchum and James Stewart, central figures in the 1978 rendition of The Big Sleep, departed this world within a day of each other. Mitchum passed away on July 1, 1997, at 79, while Stewart followed would on July 2, 1997, at 89. Their synchronized exits marked the close connection between two key players in the film. In this adaptation, Philip Marlowe's detective agency took on a new name, Philip Marlowe Commercial and Civil Investigations. Departing from previous Marlowe films, this choice introduced a shift in the portrayal of the iconic Private Eye's professional identity. Notably, Robert Mitchum's depiction of Philip Marlowe differed significantly from earlier cinematic renditions. His interpretation portrayed a Marlowe who was notably older and burdened with the weight of experience, deviating from the youthful portrayals of the past. The deaths of Mitchum and Stewart, coupled with the altered agency name and Mitchum's distinct portrayal, contribute to the unique essence of this adaptation of The Big Sleep. Richard Boone faced an early hurdle in the 1978 adaptation of The Big Sleep, breaking his foot before filming commenced. Remarkably, this setback seamlessly wove into the storyline, becoming an integral part of the narrative. The film holds the distinction of being the sole collaboration between James Stewart and Robert Mitchum. Their on-screen partnership, a unique occurrence, marked a notable chapter in the movie's production history. On set, Robert Mitchum left a lasting impression on Oliver Reed by downing a full bottle of gin in a mere 55 minutes. This incident, a testament to Mitchum's character, added a distinctive layer to the behind-the-scenes dynamics of the film. These anecdotes from Boone's foot injury shaping the plot to the rare collaboration between Stewart and Mitchum and Mitchum's remarkable drinking feat provide intriguing insights into the production of The Big Sleep. The convergence of these elements, coupled with the gritty essence of the 70s detective film wave, makes this adaptation a unique entry in the cinematic realm. James Stewart initially declined the role of General Sternwood in the 1978 adaptation, suggesting a British actor for the relocated setting in England. Meanwhile, Oliver Reed accepted the minor role of Eddie Mars solely to collaborate with Robert Mitchum. Despite the scrutiny over Mitchum's age, it's worth noting that the veteran actors portraying various roles were generally older than their on-screen characters. These behind-the-scenes dynamics, from Stewart's initial refusal to Reed's strategic choice, add layers to the film's production, showcasing the nuanced decisions that shaped the ensemble cast. In organizing a cover photo session for the explicit book discovered by Marlowe, director Michael Winner took measures to avoid copyright issues. Lindy Benson, one of the participating models, became Robert Mitchum's companion during the film's production. Mitchum, portraying Philip Marlowe, expressed concerns about his character's rejection of advances from Candy Clark, potentially leading audiences to perceive Marlowe as homosexual. The car driven by Mitchum's character is a 1954-59 Mercedes-Benz 220's Potton Cabriolet convertible. To comply with copyright regulations, Michael Winner arranged a photo session for the cover of the explicit book found by Marlowe. Lindy Benson, one of the models, became Robert Mitchum's companion during filming. Robert Mitchum, embodying Philip Marlowe, voiced worries about his character's rejection of advances from Candy Clark, possibly suggesting a different sexual orientation to the audience. The vehicle featured in the film, driven by Mitchum's character, is a 1954-59 Mercedes-Benz 220's Ponton Cabriolet convertible. In response to potential copyright issues, Michael Winner orchestrated a cover photo session for the explicit book in Marlowe's possession, featuring model Lindy Benson as one of the participants. She later became Robert Mitchum's companion during the film's production. 
Robert Mitchum, who played Philip Marlowe, expressed concerns about his character's rejection of advances from Candy Clark being misinterpreted by audiences. The car used by Mitchum's character is a 1954-59 Mercedes-Benz 220s Ponton Cabriolet convertible. These behind-the-scenes insights, from the precautions taken to avoid copyright infringement to Mitchum's considerations about his character's interactions, provide additional layers to the production of the film, offering a unique perspective on its creation.